There is a saying, you can find a Bajan Morning, morning, morning Good morning, good morning to you Approaching 30 minutes now after 7 o'clock, you would have, I suppose, heard about the upcoming Barbados Deaf Calypso project. And you're thinking, Deaf? Music? How do you do that? But it's all part of the raising of awareness of people who are hard of hearing and who are deaf and how they are also a part of our society doing regular things like quote-unquote regular people. Joining us as we focus in on the work of the Barbados Deaf uh, Association and uh, the upcoming project as well is Bonnie Leon, so a good friend. We know her so well, champion of the deaf in Barbados and also Ruth Montgomery, who is the producer of the Barbados Deaf Calypso Project and the founder of Audio Vi Visibility. Good morning, both of you. Yes, yes, uh, that and the sun rises. <laughs> Uh-huh. Good, good. I'm working on it, Bonnie. I'm working on it. But you know, Bonnie, you have been off for a long time now at the forefront, really at the forefront of agitating for some inclusivity for people who are deaf, who are hard of hearing. How does it feel to know that now so many more people are knowing about it? Okay, um, it's really good that people are really beginning to understand and acknowledge that that people are there. They're part of our society. Uh, they're not just tucked away in a corner, but they do banking, they, they pay their bills, mm -hmm. they go shopping, everything. So it's really good to know that people are beginning to acknowledge that that people really are a part of society. And I guess that's what Ruth, will explain how the project uh, fits in with our local deaf community. But how are deaf people fitting in though? How, how, is, how is society fitting into the world of people who are hard of hearing or who are deaf? How are we integrating? Uh, we're offering, well, businesses are offering uh, more opportunities. Recently we had some uh, businesses uh, the Barbados Council for the Disabled uh, was really champion, championing for businesses to uh, allow deaf people to work as a, well, not work, but have an internship period there at some businesses. And it's been really successful. Uh, we've had one or two businesses who decided to keep them mm -hmm. as after their internship. So we're seeing that, that people can work, uh, they can learn on the job. Uh, we are seeing uh, the uh, mainstreaming more of deaf children, not deaf children, but deaf adults yes. into uh, schools, hearing schools. Uh, we are seeing a lot more integration. It's baby steps, but we're hoping to see more of that happening and businesses are asking about training their staff to communicate with deaf people when they go into their businesses. You know, there was a young man who was with us over the summer and it, he was so cool. He truly, truly was so cool. I began to pick up a few little bits when it comes to signing, but it just goes to show that the people who are hard of hearing or who are deaf look like us, breathe like us, walk like us, and can do everything else that we can do too. It's just another language. And as much as we would go to school to learn French, Spanish, even Latin if necessary, the same should apply for those who are deaf, the opportunity for us to be able to learn their language as well. How do you feel about the agitation for that to happen, Bonnie? Uh, I think that's a phenomenal idea. We've been saying that now for years. Uh, you're going to meet a deaf person probably before you meet another person that speaks French or Spanish. Mm -hmm. uh, deaf people are everywhere and they're mm -hmm. all over. So it's really important. And it's really important to start teaching children how to sign so that when they grow up, there's less discrimination. Yes. Because the discrimination 
against that people are really from adults mm -hmm. and not children. You know, children are very accepting and understanding. So when we teach children, then that means our society is better in the long run. Indeed. And so we can all be better as well. I see Ruth has joined us and Ruth is nodding away in total agreement with all that you've said thus far. But Ruth, you come from the United Kingdom as a professional musician, a flautist, a music educator, and an artistic director for audio visibility. What about all of this really propels you to work with those who are hard of hearing or deaf? Hi, good morning. Thank you so much for inviting me here today. Um, the main thing is that most people uh, don't know what deaf culture is or deaf people is, but they know what music is. So by putting the two elements together, I just hope to foster communication, um, understanding, awareness, showing what we can do as well. Um, music is the language, another level on the left. And on another level, I just want to show what is possible. To Barbados, how has it been working with those who are here to really get this project on the ground? It's been incredible because there is so much passion and um, the people here in Barbados have to, yes, let's do it, act to it well. And um, yes, we want it, it's bringing people together, really, deaf and hearing, um, fostering more understanding and awareness. So, yes, it's been amazing. There is going to be the Calypso Explo, the Calypso competition on Wednesday, on the Wednesday coming up, the 9th. And I want to hear now how that will work for those of us who can't yet imagine a deaf person doing music. Yeah. Um, people need to remember that music and dancing and dance language are all very visual. So on Saturday, the deaf community went to Barbados Community College to try out the steel pan and percussion. And their music teachers, students, were teaching them how to play and hold the rhythm and all this. Uh, it's, been made, it's been amazing. There's a lot of rehearsals behind this and preparation. So, so it is possible. It's all about trying and giving a go. Go. Cool. And so on Wednesday, when we come to the Lloyd Erskine Sandiford Centre, I believe that's where it is, that, or is it the Frank Colombo Hall? I get my location right in just a moment. But when we come to this big Deaf Calypso concert showcase, we will get to see people who are deaf or hard of hearing doing the things to rhythm, to time that we've grown accustomed to with people who, are, who do have normal hearing. Would I be right, Ruth? Absolutely, that's right. We will have um, deaf people standing the national anthem, the song, as well as playing on the pan, doing action. So you'll be in for a lovely surprise. So I would recommend that many people come to watch us and do us there. So right, it's at the Frank Collymore Hall, the Frank Collymore Hall. Yes. It starts, yes, it starts at a quarter past six on the evening of Wednesday. This coming Wednesday is a free sunset concert at the Frank Collymore Hall featuring Sean Forbes, Warren Snipe, the Barbados Community College Steel and Percussion Band and members of the Bajan Deaf community. And so I've just called a couple names there, Ruth, who people are unfamiliar with, like Sean Forbes, Warren Snipe. Can you tell us a little bit about them? Yeah, Sean Forbes and Warren Snipe, as known as Wawa, they are both deaf musician, they are both rappers, um, very well known in the deaf community. They know ASL, American Dan language, which is also the language of Barbados, Barbadian deaf community. Um, we have been working with Stoker musician Teddy Calderon, who is the musician, and bringing the spirit of the Caribbean into our music track. Also, the music teacher. Andre Ford and Roger Gittin have been really supportive, bringing in musicians from their college to come together. It's all a very blending kind of um, music. So that, that, 
Bria and Humia. It's going to be fantastic on Wednesday. Wednesday at a quarter past six, the Frank Collimo Hall is a free sunset concert. It is not a gimmick, so don't go there to think it's a gimmick. These are real life people who are doing fantastic things who are deaf and they're engaging with music, all part of the audio visibility project ongoing. So come witness the Deaf Calypso concert showcase at the Frank Colombo Hall, Wednesday, 6.15 in the evening. It's free, but we want as many people to fill the hall with all of this. And you, if you want to know more about it, you can go to Ticket Event Bright Tickets or go to the website thecalypsoproject.com. Thecalypsoproject.com. But be at the Frank Colombo Hall, Wednesday, for 6.15. Thank you so much, Bonnie. Thank you so much, Ruth. I wish you best on Wednesday with the Calypso Project. Thank you. <laughs> Morning, Bobby. This takes a break. We're coming back in just a moment. What's up? What's up, beautiful people? What's up? I'm excited for the big show on November 9th. Yeah, brother. Tell me where we're performing. We're performing in Barbados at the Frank Carrymore Hall. It's a beautiful venue. We will have a full band, steel hand drums too, from the Barbados Community College. Several people from the Barbados that community will perform too. Woo! It's going to be a great show. We will share new songs as part of the Calypso Project. The show will be on Wednesday, November 9th. At the time of 6.15 in the evening. The show is free to attend and will be live streamed for everyone around the world to watch. Let's go! Can't wait to get down to Barbados and have some fun. Woo! See you there. Show some 